Just as the 3DS Max photometric lights are a physical simulation of how light works in the real world, the physical material is a simulation of the surface properties of objects. And the physical material fits into a physically based rendering workflow, and it's basically renderer agnostic. It will look almost exactly the same in any physically based renderer. Before we work on building materials, I recommend that we hide these material samples in the Material Map browser. The rendering of these samples can actually be problematic. The sample rendering is only single threaded, and sometimes sample rendering is re triggered when it shouldn't be, and it can cause problems. It can actually slow down our interactivity in the material editor. So for performance reasons, it's a good idea to turn off the rendering of these samples. And there are numerous ways to do this. One is to disable the little teapot icon at the very lower left of the Slate Material Editor. And when that's off, there will be no rendering of any previews at all in the Material Editor. Well, that's really not going to work if we want to preview materials that we're working on. So we do want to have that turned on right now. Another way to speed things up is to hide these icons. So we have the option to display all of these materials as text instead of icons and text. The way to do that is to right-click on the name of each rollout. I can right-click on Materials and choose Display Group and Subgroups as Text Only. And now we don't have any previews. Do the same for the Maps rollout. Right-click display group and subgroups as text. And also for the scene materials, right click, display group and subgroups as text. And now the only samples that will render will be the ones in the sample slots or in the graph itself. The most extreme way of preventing these samples from rendering is to hide the material map browser entirely. And I do that a lot because I can create materials and maps from a right click menu. And as long as I don't need access to the scene materials or the sample slots, I actually don't need the Material Map Browser. So I can just close it by clicking on the X. And I can create materials and maps from the right-click menu. Right-click anywhere in the view. And from the pop-up menu, let's choose Materials, General, Physical Material. Double-click on that materials sample to make it larger, and that will also load its parameters. The physical material has some handy presets built in, and these can be helpful, especially when you're learning how the physical material works. So at the top here, we have presets and a pull down list. Choose preset. Let's choose glossy paint. And our material updates. Let's minimize this. And so we got a little bit more screen real estate. We've got the glossy paint preset loaded, and it's got a blue color. And it's got a roughness here of 0.28. Roughness is probably the most important of all of the physical parameters. A low roughness corresponds to a highly polished, smooth surface that will give us sharp, shiny reflections. A high roughness corresponds to a dull or matte finish surface. The difference in roughness can be illustrated by using another preset. Let's make a duplicate of this material. Hold down Shift and drag and make a copy. And with that copy selected from the presets pull down, choose Matte Paint. And the only difference between these two materials is the roughness value. This one here is Matte Paint. Let's rename it. I'll call it Paint Matte. And this one up here, I'll rename that too, call it Paint Glossy. The glossy material has a roughness of 0.28. So we see a fairly defined highlight there. The matte paint has got a roughness of 0.6. And we do still see a highlight, but it is pretty dim and pretty spread out. If we had a roughness of 1, we would see no highlight at all. So I'll make another duplicate, hold down Shift and drag out, and select that duplicate, and increase its roughness up to the maximum of 1. And now we have no highlight at all. The difference between the roughness of 1 and roughness of 0.6 is especially evident here in this backlit area. Many of these presets have a base color weight 
which is not at the maximum. So we've got a color here, but we've also got the intensity of that color, which is the base color weight. And these are all set to a value of 0.7. Well, I prefer to have these at their maximum because then this color swatch over here is going to more accurately represent the final color I get in my material. So I'll set the base color weight up to a value of one. And now you see how much brighter that is. I'll do that for all of these, bring them all up to a value of one. I do recommend when you're working with materials that you start from a base color weight of one. Again, so that the color of the final material closely matches the color of this swatch over here. Those are a couple of the most basic parameters for physical material. It's base color and weight, and it's roughness.